thank you, Rebecca and Richard, for inviting me. Um, I was, we, to some extent, regard this as a culmination of 15 years um, work, learning to be an entrepreneur. If, you, if I look at the website, I was trying to think how I can put a presentation together. It said people were going to come here if they were th looking to think about starting a business or thinking if they, how they could grow their business. So I, I, want, I thought it would be appropriate to talk to you about what I've learned about growing a business in the Philippines. So I'm from the UK, and I'll explain a bit about my history in a minute, but that's why this presentation is called The Entrepreneurship Journey of an English Chemist in the Philippines. Now this journey would not have been complete without my wife, Kathy, so I'm going to embarrass her by asking her to stand up this time, because it's very relevant to this conversation. This is my wife, Kathy. So I would regard Kathy and I very similar to Richard and Rebecca. We complement each other very well. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Okay, so I'm going to give you an overview of the Nurture story. For those of you that don't know, we run a place in Tagaytay Tagai called Nurture Wellness Village. I'm going to talk about my story here in the Philippines, entrepreneurship and what it means to me, and also learnings to share, because as I'll explain to you, I never expected to be an entrepreneur, and I've had to study it effectively from the beginning as to how to run a business, and also some conclusions. So first of all, I'd like to tell you about the Nurture Wellness Village story. We started with um, very humble beginnings. We started in 2001, and I actually met Kathy when she was first setting up Nurture, and this is what it looked like. You can see um, it really was still in the process of being constructed. And in 2001, we had four employees, and we were stretched over 1,800 square meters of land at the very back of Tagaytay, almost in Amadeo where the coffee's very good, Gary. So now we, we are an, an, a nurture wellness village. We're an ecotourism, cultural, and wellness destination with four pillars, based on four pillars. That is, we are proudly Filipino, which was quite unique when we set it up in 2001. Everyone, everybody wanted to be Thai or Indonesian. We are proudly Filipino. We're very much into health, health and wellness. We believe in inclusive growth. We're in a very small barangay in, in, in the back of Tagaytay. Most of our employees, which I'll talk about in a minute, live within a kilometer of Nurture Wellness Village, and we're also into sustainability. As of 2018, we have 150 employees. We're over 1.5 hectares, and we stretch over two barangays. And we are we were pl pleased to say that we've been TripAdvisor um, winner of Certificate of Excellence since 2014. At the moment, we're number one hotel on TripAdvisor in Tagaytay against hotels, I'm not going to mention my competition, but some very su substantial other players in Tagaytay. We're into ecotherapy, massage. We have our own signature restaurant called Gabriella. Gabriella was a very famous woman in the Philippines. Uh, she fought the Spanish. We're proud to have that Filipino connection. We celebrate local cuisine, local vore, which again I'll talk about in a minute, but that's essentially sourcing as much as we can from the location. We make healthy food delicious. We also have accommodations. Most people think we're just a spa, but we have 20 overnight rooms, which most of our key rooms, our most popular rooms, you see the photo on the top left, is inspired by the Ifigal houses from Ifigal but we have running hot and cold water and air conditioning in those same rooms. We also do weddings and holistic evidence-based detox, pro detox programs. Now that's very important because it led us to another business, another opportunity. And it led us to create Nurture Pharmacy. Um, and the idea being that we would grow our own vegetables and our own fruit um, so we could guarantee their quality, but we'd also educate people in how and what fruits and what plants they could, could eat and, and seek as actually medicine. And this is food as medicine using old wisdom from way back in Philippine times. And also, we actually wanted to create an opportunity where people could live in that farm and interact and have, explore family ties. So we created a campsite in, in the farm called Camp Nurture. And that's really what we've been managed, I managed to achieve in the last 15 years between Kathy and I and now 150 employees in, in the Philippines, in Tagaytay. 
The other thing that I think is very interesting, bearing in mind the other presentations this afternoon, is we also have something called the Work Well Project, where we encourage teams or company teams to come to Nurture and learn about wellness, learn about nutrition, so they can actually improve their productivity when they go back to the workplace. Over the last 15 years, that's what we've been able to achieve. But to be honest, I never expected to have anything of that sort of life or that sort of business. I'm 52 years old and I actually joined Unilever in 1992 as a management trainee in the UK. The photo on the right is a photo of my father. Obviously, the Kathy is the photo on the left. But my father worked for the same company for 46 years. My mother came from, she met my mother, he met my mother in that company, my aunt worked for that company, my father and my grandfather worked for that company as well. So I never had an expectation that I would become an entrepreneur. And the conversation over lunch and over breakfast was not about business. I think Jerry's story is wonderful that he would have a mentor that he, he grew the ice business from his five, since he was five years old. I moved to the Philippines in 2001 with Unilever, but I met Kathy. I was very lucky. I met Kathy the third day I was here and decided I didn't want to leave. Unilever insisted that I had to move to Singapore, so I left to stay in the Philippines. I was an expat. I was earning what I would consider a lot of money, and I gave it up to stay in the Philippines. All of my... Thank you, ma'am. All of my colleagues thought I was crazy. I freely admit, all of my colleagues thought I was crazy in 2001. I met one of them last year, who was now my customer. He told me that, he, that they thought I was mad, but he congratulated me on the progress that I had done since then. And I believe that's in many ways down to the people in the Philippines and the opportunities that are available in the Philippines. So that is my message to any foreigner considering investing in the Philippines. As I mentioned, we met, I met Kathy the third day I was here. We opened Nurture in May 2002. I left Unilever in 2004. We got married, best decision I ever made, in 2005. And this is very significant for me. I felt I didn't know enough about how to run a business, so I did a master's in entrepreneurship in 2010 in Ateneo. So I'm an Atenean. I don't know, I'm not going to... Let's not get into LaSalle and UP, but I'm very proud to be an Antonian, okay? But as I've said to you several times, I never expected to run my, my, run my own business. So what I want to share with you is what I've learned along the way. I now, now know most of you have run your own businesses, but I'm hoping at least something I'm going to say in the next 10 minutes may jog your memory or maybe give you some learning which you can use in your business. So here goes. What I've learned along the way, entrepreneurship or running your own business is a mixture of self-mastery, i.e. you need to know about yourself, enterprise mastery, you, know, you need to know how to run a business, and situation mastery, your business does not operate in a vacuum. You need to know what's going on outside that business. So I'm going to go through each one of these. And I'm not just going to, what I tried to do is I'm not just going to tell you this, I'm actually going to show you some things that maybe you, how you can learn more about yourself or the opportunities. So here we go. Self-mastery. Let's, do you know yourself? Do you know what you're good at or you're not good at? Because if you're good at something, you'll probably do more of it. If you're not good at it, you probably shy away from it. But if you're running a business, you have to find someone else that's going to be able to do the things you're not good at. Do you have the, mind, the right mindset to be an entrepreneur? Do you have the habits of a successful person? And do you have a high adversity, adversity quotient? Living in the Philippines is great, but so many things happen. Typhoons, volcanoes, whatever. But one of the things I've seen about Filipinos is they're incredibly resilient. Far more than people like myself or people come from the West. You're so much more resilient and we can learn so much from you. So, how are you going to learn more about yourself? Now, I can't go into the details of this, but what I recommend you do, it's absolutely free. You can learn more about yourself using Myers-Briggs, and you can download this off the internet. But I'd encourage you to do that, because it will just, there's 16 different personality types in the, in the world, and you'll find out which one you are, and you'll understand more about how you interact with other people. It's a free personality test. The, web, the website link is there. Also, there's something amazing called Ned Herman, which talks about four different brain uh, quadrants. 
Ned Herman did a study of entrepreneurs and he found that only 3% of the population have what they call a complete brain in terms of thinking. Most people have one dominant quadrant. But the best entrepreneurs like Richard Branson, they had four quadrants that were in perfect harmony. So if you can build, if you can study this and find out where you're weak and do something to address one of those quadrants where you're weakest, you can frankly become a better entrepreneur. The other thing is, do you behave like a successful person? Do you have the habits of a successful person? And for the best suggestion I've seen of this is something called The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. And he studied successful people and he identified five traits of successful people. And he encourages everybody to do that before 8 a.m. 8 in the morning so that they can become a more successful person. Recommend this book, it's 300 pesos in, in um, national. The other thing is, the, the thing that reminds me more about self-mastery is Rich Dad Poor Dad. I wasn't a big fan of Rich Dad Poor Dad because this guy lined himself up with Donald Trump. But in his book, Rich Dad um, Guide to Investing, he's got a 600 page book, but the first 40 pages talks about the mindset of running a business and investing. So mindset is so important. Enterprise mastery. Do you know how to set up a business? Do you know how to read financial statements? Because if you don't know how to read a financial statement, you may, not, you, may, you may not realize that you're actually losing money. Do you know the tax laws and other laws relevant for your business? And how can you set up a business so that you do not have to make, so you do not have to be there in the long run? That's so important. You don't want to be running a business where you have to be there day in, day out because it's going to become a slog. It's no longer going to be enjoyable. You can go to Negotio, the Negotio Center set up by DTI. Miss Vicky Bello has also been a very big supporter of Go Negotio. But also, there are books like E-Myth, uh, E-Myth Mastery, which will teach you the systems by which you can actually set up a business so you don't have to be there on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, you can also become a master entrepreneur through Ateneo. Now, the last one is Situation Mastery. Your business does not exist in a vacuum. There's going to be political, economic, social, technological, or environmental issues. And these are changing all the time. A good example, Duterte had his orders at six-month closer of Boracay. He ordered it last week. I can tell you all the, all the hotels in Cebu are very happy. Or in Baguio, they're very happy. In Bohol, they're very happy. But of course, in Tagaytay, they're very happy. But in, in, in Boracay, how are you going to make the best of this situation? You could be renovating your rooms. How are you going to make the best of it? Another way of looking at an ent entrepreneurship. Rich Dad, Poor Dad Guide to Investing talks about three things that you need to have to invest in business. Experience, education, and excess cash. I want to talk about excess cash. Because if you're starting a business, the biggest issue tends to be, I don't have the money. I don't have the money to start a business. Well, you're going to save a lot of cash by getting an education. You don't have to go to Ateneo, but you need to get an education. This sort of event is actually you getting an education. It's a way of getting experience from other people. But at some point, you have to start. Sometimes you will lose money, but that is actually experience. You have to look at it as experience. Don't beat yourself up for making a mistake. Regard it as learning that you paid for. You can also work or volunteer in someone else's company, not for a salary, but the experience. And to gain experience with the least amount of cash, there's one other suggestion. In the book, Good to Great, Jim Collins talks about firing bullets before you fire cannonballs, because bullets are much cheaper than cannonballs. I'd like to give you an example. When we set up the tents in Nurture, the campsite, we started on the left for one year and proved our concept. The total investment was 300,000 pesos. Once we proved the concept, we did the thing on the right, which cost us 2 million pesos. So fire bullets before you fire cannonballs. I hope I've given you some ideas of how to start or grow a business. The journey never ends. I have a wonderful example of this. If I, I've already embarrassed my wife. I'm going to do it again. This was Kathy last month, March 25, 2018. She took a diploma in culinary arts and graduated. 
uh, with a professional academy for culinary education because we wanted to get better at running our restaurant. And there's nothing better than knowing your business yourself. So it never stops. It never stops. If you stop, you're going to die. So measures of success. I, I mean, we talked about profit of being a measure of success, and Jerry talked about this. I'd like to give you some ideas of other measures of success. This is uh, Lena, Manang Lena. We call her Manang Lena. She's a widow with five children. A Atalina used to clear grass for a living. She literally just spent every week just cutting grass in, in Amadeo in Tagaytay. And she didn't see people very often. She's now a farm guide, farm guide in our nurture pharmacy. She appeared on radio with uh, Miss Corrie, and people were asking her whether she had a book, whether she'd like to write a book with all her knowledge about um, medicine from plants. This is Reggie. Reggie used to be a balut vendor outside nurture when we started, but now he's actually our head of housekeeping, team leader. And I think the best one is Sally. She's, she actually started with us as a massage therapist in 2001. She still works for us now. Um, her savings enabled her to build a five-door apartment from which she earns extra income. So actually now, she's a real estate person. She has a five-door apartment. So that's the power of inclusive growth and industry in the Philippines. I'd like to say thank you very much. And we'd very much like to welcome you to Nurture and into Gaitai in the future. Thank you very much.